our main focus is going to be we're going to stay break let the core load back and then bring the ball back over the arm will be natural it'll go where it's supposed to go all right so we got rid of this we don't want this we don't want the toe point in here we don't want the glove point in here and we're not focused on thumb or hip rotation all right so this uh, uh, shoulder tilt is big too that's my fourth one so the hand brakes is one the toe point into where it's supposed to is one the the uh, glove side being over here and we're not we're not rotating our hip with it we're keeping it closed and using our core is one and then the other one on this deal that that really and of course we got to stay online that helps out too but the other one on this deal that's that's big on the uh, on the inversion stuff is being fast to the plate with your shoulder down. Okay, so you hear guys say, "Throw down hill." Throw down hill is what creates too fast moving forward. If you know the numbers in the major leagues, a guy that's on the mound, first move with a runner on first. The guy that's on the mound first move. Ball goes up to the catcher, catcher catches the ball, throws it down a second, pop at second. 3.45 are the magic numbers. Okay? From the time he moves to the time he's caught at second base, 3.45. Now let's think about that. If the average catcher in the major league is 2.0, believe it or not, it is 2.0. Nobody can dispute that. 2.0 is a major league average for a catcher's pop time. That means a pitcher has 1.45. So when he slide steps, he doesn't have to jump out there as fast as he can and throw the ball. What you want to see him do is he still has to stay in his backside and get back on top. We still got to throw a strike. We still got to have a chance for a double play ball. We still got to get a good ball to the catcher for him to throw the guy out. So we don't want to give up mechanics to throw a ball in the dirt not do either one, not get the guy out or throw a strike. So we want to still stay in our mechanics, but we got to remember we can stay under 1.45. Okay? Now, let's, th let's think about this. Major League base dealers are a lot faster than the majority of high school base dealers. Okay? So technically that pitcher could be a 1.65. Alright? As long as your catchers are two. Oh, because this guy's a little slower going a second. But wait, most catchers in high school are 2.2. So now we got a 2.2 behind the plate with a 1.65. Now it's all tight again. Okay? So if it's all tight again, now we got this pitcher's got to be a 1.45 again. It's pretty standard that a guy that's throwing 80 plus miles an hour has time to get in his backside and still come back over and be a 1.35. So we don't have to rush a pitcher to the plate. There's no need to rush the pitcher to the plate. And if you got a big boy on first that's going to steal, you definitely don't want to rush the, the pitcher to the plate. Give the catcher a good ball. Let him throw the guy out. All right, so we're talking front shoulder down. The other thing is about the front shoulder down is his core is unloaded and he's falling. So he's getting off his back leg early. So when the front side hits, now he has to spring everything back through. And once again, we're living on arm speed, elasticity. How many times can you pull that rubber band or roll it off the end of the table before it breaks? We don't want to try that, okay? So, we're, the shoulder down and fast to the plate is the arm killer. So we want to be front shoulder up, weight back. Besides that, consistency is the number one thing. The more guys you get out the plate, the more the least guys you walk, the, 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 when you don't walk a lot of guys and you get a lot of outs at the plate, who cares about runners? You shouldn't have a lot of them at that point. If you're booting balls in the field, you're going to lose ball games anyways. You can't catch fly balls, you're going to lose fly. You're going to lose games anyways. If you can't hit, now you got to keep it to a no one gets on base. So you better do your job at the plate as a pitcher. You better be able to throw strikes. And if you start messing with a pitcher, changing up what he's doing just to get an out on the base with a runner going to second, 
more than likely you're going to end up giving up more runs because he's going to walk more guys. So let him do his job. Let him pitch. All right, a couple drills to uh, help with consistency and using the core properly. Okay. I like to take the med ball. We do not throw weight at balls. We will never throw weight at balls. I need to put that out there. Uh, I'm not going to say who drive line, but I'm not going to say who. If you're watching this video, I don't care for any of the weighted ball stuff. What I will say is this. If you see improvement in what you're doing with somebody else, and your kid is consistent, and he's not getting hurt, more power to you. I believe strongly in what I do. I know there's other guys out there. I've had some words with a couple of guys that are, have some names in the world that believe strongly in what they do. But what I'm going to tell you is, is that I personally think weighted balls are a catastrophe waiting, for, waiting to happen for a, a pitcher. Um, simple, one quick thing. If you swing a whole spring season with a 32-inch, 29-ounce bat, and somebody hands you a 33-inch, 30-ounce bat, and you step in the box, your body's going to compensate with one inch, one ounce ounce just like that instantly you're going to change your swing just based on that one bat so if you pick up a five ounce baseball and you throw all the spring with a five ounce baseball and then somebody's got you working out with a 10 ounce baseball you're going to compensate really fast mechanically and it's going to change what you've been doing and that's not what you want you want to stay consistent with what you're doing all right so i'm gonna get off of that but we do med ball stuff for our core we never use one hand, we always use two hands, and we always focus on core transfer. So in this drill, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna focus on, we're gonna stride out like we just landed. Our front side's gonna be closed off, our shoulder's gonna be closed off. We're gonna rock back into the back leg, so from the side it looks like this. We're gonna push back into the back leg, we're gonna rock the hands back, and then come over and slam the ball down in front of us. So it'll look like this, and we're going to use our core to slam, and we're going to make sure our back foot comes up by using our core. Your core should engage into a three-quarter motion. It'll pull your backside up. If I do this, it automatically wants to kick my back leg up. So if I core and drive the back leg, I'll pick up instant velocity that way. And because it's a transfer of weight into one point, I can be consistent with that release point. If it's a whipping motion, I can't be consistent. All right, so that's one drill we do. The other drill we do is a bucket top. 250, three bucks, whatever it is. Walmart or Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever. I, they don't sponsor me, so I'm just throwing it out there. You can get them there. If you want to sponsor me, if you're watching this and you're at Lowe's, hook me up. All right, so my, my feet are apart. Same thing, just like we did the med ball just then, using both hands, set this one's one hand, arms over, okay? We're gonna rock back. Now, what we're working with is centrifugal force, okay? So I got a bucket top. If I turn my hand down, which more, most people are taught to turn their hand down. If I turn my hand down, I lost the bucket top, which means gravity took over. So it tries to pull it down automatically which means I actually create negative force. Then I have to grab it and pull it back. That means there's a violent motion somewhere to get it to come back through. I want centrifugal force. I want a good smooth motion, almost like I'm gonna take a pie and put it in somebody's face. And I wanna almost drop it and then come back through with my core. All right, same thing, weights back. Staying on line, front foot's a little open, rock back, and we're gonna slam it down. Go every time is, we want it to land flat on the ground, not kick off or run anywhere. Always here, slam it down. If we can slam it down, that means our hand stayed behind it the whole way through. Also what it does is, it creates the proper arm slot and lets you know the core's being worked right. If you see a kid glove tucked this way, First thing that'll happen is, the hand gets underneath it. He can't stop it. Every single time he can't, the hand gets underneath it. There's nothing you can do about that. There's no way to fix that. So what you have to do is not 
glove tuck. You have to drive over with your core and it'll get you where you're supposed to be every time. One more thing that we do is the stick. I, 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 this stick is about five foot, probably need about an eight foot stick. Put the stick over the shoulders, hands here. You're gonna stay back. You can go down and touch your toe with that stick. If it's longer, it helps out. So you're gonna go here, go down and touch it with the, touch the toe with the stick. And that'll allow you to feel your core going into the proper motion that it's supposed to. There's more drills we're gonna do. I'll get, I'll get on here and do more on and off. We'll talk more about it. Um, if you have questions, uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, theuniversityofbaseball.com, or the University of Baseball is my Facebook, theuniversityofbaseball.com is my website. Um, you can find, uh, y'all can, also can look me up on Baseball 101, James Bills, Baseball 101. That's how you can distinguish the James Bills. Uh, you can find me on there, and um, I have some other things on there as well. Uh, I work with a lot of different guys. I've been doing this a long time. Um, we have a proven method. We have a lot of guys in college, a lot of pitchers in college, um, a lot of big velocity guys, a lot of very successful pitchers across the state. Um, look me up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Help, hope it helps out. I'm not going to be one of those guys that's going to be looking for money for to send you a video or all that kind of stuff. If you have questions about your son, you can link, you can send me, an inbox me a video if you want to. We can talk about some things on there. Um, I make money doing other stuff as well. I'm not focused on making money off of this, this deal. I'm just trying to help out. Uh, unlike many, many other out there, I do this because I love it and um, I, I know others love it too, but I don't need that extra financial, financial help off of this. I just want to help out. Thank you for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, inbox me and I'll help you out.